Hello everyone and welcome back to video number four. In this video we're going to add movement to our player. The first thing I notice though is that we have not named our sprite. So I'm going to do that real quick and change it from sprite one into player. Now I notice that the background is still set to level three, but I want to change that to level one for now. How I can do that is by going to the stage area and double clicking the background. Now I can change that from level three to level number one. Now I want to go back to my player because I want to work on my player movement. If I go to the sprite window, I can click on my player, and then if I go to the top left, I want to change it to the code tab. Now I can actually go about choosing these code blocks to make our player move. So how does movement work in Scratch? Well, I have my player, and he's going to move on an XY coordinate system, where the X axis controls left and right movement, and the Y axis controls up and down movement. And if we look down here in the sprite window, we can see the X position and the Y position of our player. So I'm going to change both the X and the Y to zero. And notice the player goes in the exact center of the stage. As I change the X to a positive value, say 50, notice the player will move to the right. And as I decrease that value, setting it back to zero, notice the player moves back to the left. So as the player moves to the right, the X increases, and as the player moves to the left, the X decreases. Notice as we pass zero, the X values will become negative. It works the same way with the Y values, but instead of going left and right, now our player will move up or down. So as I move up, the Y values increase. As I move down, the Y values decrease. And when I pass zero, the Y values will become negative. So we can use this coordinate plane system to help our character move. The first thing we want to do though is set the starting position for the character. And I want the character to start at the bottom left of the screen. So how I can set my starting position is by clicking the events tab over here and using that first code block when the green flag is clicked. And if we go over here above the stage, we can see a green flag and a red stop sign. When the green flag is clicked, it will start actually playing the game and running the code. So when that flag is clicked, we want to set our player's position to be right there on the screen. So how I can do that is by going to the Motion tab and using this code block right here. Go to X negative 210, Y negative 137. And I'm going to drag that code block underneath that when the green flag is clicked button. Notice the position negative 210 and negative 137 is the exact same position as our player right now on the stage. So if I was to move the player and click the green flag, notice our player goes right back to that starting position. Now we want to add movement to our player. So once again, I'm going to go to events and I'm going to drag when the green flag is clicked into my workspace. Now what I want to use is an if then loop. So I'm going to find that under control. So we have if then. And how an if then loop works is say for instance, if the light at an intersection is green, then I can go. But if the light at an intersection is red, then I have to stop. So the action is depending on what is in the if space. So normally in games, we use arrow keys to control the player. We're going to do that same thing here. So I want it to say, if the right arrow key is pressed, move the player to the right. And if the left arrow key is pressed, move the player to the left. So what we can do now is go to the Sensing tab, and we're going to use this code block right here, key space pressed. And I'm going to drag that into the spot right there after the if. And if I click this down arrow, I can change it from the space bar to the right arrow. 
So now it says, if the right arrow is pressed, then something should happen. Well, that something is we want to move the player to the right. So if I go to motion, and I will choose change X by 10. So if the right arrow key is pressed, then we want the X to change by 10, which moves our player to the right. If I press the green flag and try it, nothing is happening. So why is nothing happening? Well, because this code is only running one time as soon as the flag is clicked. Notice when I click the green flag, it will quickly highlight this code. So how do we fix this problem? Well, we can go to control and we want to add a forever loop, which means run this code every frame all the time. So now when I click the green flag and I hold down the right arrow key, now our player does in fact move to the right. So now we want to do the same thing, but move the player to the left when the left arrow key is pressed. So instead of choosing all those code blocks again, all I have to do is right click and choose duplicate. Now I have that same code. But now instead of right arrow, we want it to be the left arrow. And instead of changing it by positive 10, since we want it to go to the left, we're going to change it to negative 10. And I'm going to drag these code blocks right underneath the first if then statement. So now if I press the green flag and I press the right arrow key, our player moves to the right. And if I press the left arrow key, our player moves to the left. So now we have a player that moves to the left and the right. But notice the player does not change direction when I press left and right. So this is what we want to happen next. The good news is it's pretty simple to do this. All I have to do is go to motion and I want to use the point in direction code block. So when the right arrow key is pressed, I want him facing the right direction. So if I click on the 90, you can see that he is in fact pointed in the right direction. If I drag that same code block to the bottom one, I want him now pointing in the left direction. So if I click that 90, I can move this arrow to the left, which notice it sets it to negative 90, and now he will be pointing in the left direction. If I go back to the game and use the right arrow, he does in fact point to the right, and if I use the left arrow, he does in fact switch directions now and is pointing to the left. At this point, some of you may be recognizing a bug in your code, and this bug is making the player move upside down when you move left and right. The good news is there's an easy fix for this. All you have to do is grab the set rotation style block, make sure you set it to left and right, and then place that block right after the when the green flag is clicked block. Now if we hit the green flag and move our player, you'll notice that he no longer rotates upside down. So the final thing we want to do is add the animation to our player. So how we can do that is by going to looks and using the next costume code block. And I'm going to put this below the change X by 10. I'm going to do that same thing for the right arrow key and for the left arrow key. So what this is doing is when you press the right or left arrow key, it is changing from costume one to costume two to costume three to costume four in an infinite loop. So let's see how it works. There we go. And now we can see it actually looks like our player is running. Unfortunately, I'm not an artist, so it's not that cool, but the animation is in fact working. The animation's pretty quick though. Let's say I wanted to slow it down so we can actually see the animations a little bit better. How I can do this is go to the control tab and I'm gonna use the wait one seconds button. And I'm gonna put that right underneath the next costume for both the right arrow and the left arrow. Now when I go back to my game, whoa, notice the player is moving very slowly. So what I wanna do is change it from wait one second, cause one second is a long time, to 0 0.01 seconds. So it's such a short amount of time that it won't make it seem like the game is laggy. Now when I move my character, you can see he's moving, but it still seems fast. 
So I want to change this value to a value that I like. And it really is just a bunch of trial and error, just trying different numbers and see what looks best to you. So when we set it to 0.05, there we go. Now our player is moving slower. We can actually see the animations and our player is moving to the left and to the right. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.